Hey, what's going on guys? This is just another video from Jody. Now in this video, what we're going to cover is should you buy Final Cut Pro 10? Should you use this as your primary editing system? Now, first things first, let's get uh, Final Cut Pro 10 defined. Now, Final Cut Pro 10 was Apple's latest editing software release of um, its famous Final Cut Pro line. Now, in Final Cut Pro 7, which was its predecessor, Final Cut Pro aimed that program towards professionals. Now, these professionals would lie in the television industry, film industry, and internet industry. They would make videos universally for everyone. Now, Final Cut Pro 10 was targeted for three people, at least I think. Three people. Now, the first one is consumer. Now, what is a consumer? In my terms, a consumer is people who buy things and use them. The second type is a prosumer. People who buy things and use them a little bit more. Hmm. And finally, the modern professional. This was designed for modern professionals. Pe professionals who want to tell their story with the flexibility of using modern formats, such as 1080, 720, 480, 360, 240, and beyond. So even 2K. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of professionals nowadays use modern formats, such as 1080, you know, 720. And basically, if you deliver content online and it's high quality, then consider yourself a modern professional. Well, why not? So here's the deal. If you are a storytelling editor, this is the program for you. If you like to get your message out opposed to having you know, specific technicalities such as, you know, you need to print this to video or you need to print this to tape or you need to use specific uh, formats, then, you know, this program is probably not for you. Now, that's a thing. You have to consider um, something. Are you a storytelling editor or are you just a specific editor? Okay, if you want to, you know, ensure greatness out of this program, you're going to have to label yourself. I know this is this is horrible, but you have to categorize yourself. Are you one of those editors that needs something specific to perform something specific? If so, then uh, stop watching. Please. No, I'm just kidding. Um, basically, specific editors need specific tools in order to get out specific things. Now, think of it this way. Avid. Avid is another NLE, and it's a media composer uh, 5, I, no, it's actually Media Composer 6 now, and it's 64-bit, and basically that program carries tools that allows editors to have flexibility. They could, you know, basically do specific things, specific actions for specific clients, for specific television networks. So labor yourself. Are you a specific editor, or are you a general, cool, modern editor? It all depends, and they're both cool, by the way. Now, also, another question that you should consider is what type of system do you run on? If you contain a computer that is, uh, you know, that is more uh, modern, you know, if you have a Mac that's modern, then wh why not? Use this program. It's going to fully optimize itself to use, to be using your system. If you're running, a, let's say, an old MacBook, then you probably should stick to Final Cut Pro 7 for now, but... Uh, I would totally reconsider it and go to Final Cut Pro 10. Just experiment with it at least. Now, Final Cut Pro 10 has so much potential. I cannot stress enough. I myself am an editor that has edited some shows and some client uh, content for different clients. You know, they have been uh, clients for television shows. They have been clients for, you know, specific material. And, you know, they don't know what I use to edit with. And I always tell them I edit with something cool. And that's because I've been editing a lot with Final Cut Pro 10 now. I mean, it's crazy. I'm actually certified in Final Cut Pro 7. I believe it or not, but I'm, I prefer to use Final Cut Pro 10 over 7 now because I am a modern pro. That's what I labeled myself. So label yourself now. Basically, I've edited with Final Cut Pro 10, and at first I was like, what is this? What is this? And I, you know, I started getting frustrated because what happened to the old things? I mean, the old one was so good. And now you're giving us this? What's up? You left me hanging, man. But I started getting the hang of it, started getting the hang of events, started getting tricks, tips, and how, wow, it was amazing. Then I found the software to be a bit more intuitive because it's more aesthetically pleasing. And sometimes when I want to work on it, you know, at night, when I want to edit at night, when everyone's sleeping, 
the visuals are so easy to the eye. Oh my gosh, you cannot, wow, it's amazing. The content, I mean, the interface is really nice. A lot of people say it looks like iMovie, and yes, it does look like iMovie, but it has different, a whole lot of potential. <laughs> you know, iMovie is something, but Final Cut Pro is definitely something else. Definitely. Anyway, let's continue. Final Cut Pro 10 has a lot of things that Final Cut Pro 7 didn't have. For example, multicam. It's coming. Don't worry. It's going to come eventually. Learn the program now. It's an investment. If you bought the program and cannot get a refund, consider it an investment. Okay? Because it will be a good program. Watch. I can't emphasize how much people are going to just start a bandwagon once the next update comes. I mean, it's so, you know, please don't be part of the bandwagon. Be part of the revolution. Be part of the uh, people who say, uh, you know, who say, I, I learned this program when it just came out, you know, because it's a really nice program. It's really nice. Uh, I made a show, a reality show that has over 2,000 edits, and it just, it was just 30 minutes. That's insane. This program could handle that, and wow. Here's the thing. I sometimes would miss things from Final Cut Pro 7 whenever I'm editing in Final Cut Pro 10, but then when I would go back to Final Cut Pro 7, I would miss things that, you know, we're not in, are not in Final Cut Pro 7, and but are in Final Cut Pro 10. So it's really a love-hate-hate-love relationship with both of these programs. But what I recommend for you to do is stick with the one that's more modern. You know, basically, if you go back to Final Cut Pro 7, you're going to kind of feel awkward. It's like, you know, I'm editing with dead software. You know, <laughs> so my recommendation, and I cannot stress this enough, if you made it to this point of this video, then you are totally dedicated. Use Final Cut Pro 10. It has so much more potential. It will have a lot, a lot of weapons in the next upcoming months. And what can I say? This program is sweet. I totally recommend it to the modern professional prosumers and consumers. So if you are one of them, consider yourself lucky. Because, um, you know, even Apple is offering a 30-day trial. It won't hurt if you download and try it. Okay, if you do need any help, I will be releasing a Final Cut Pro 10 training. The first one here available on YouTube. And don't worry about it. I will edit myself so I don't make a lot of uh, us and os. So, you know, just something to keep in mind. So, should you get this program? If you are a storytelling editor and don't mind, you know, being modern, then go ahead and use it. But if you are a specific editor with specific needs to deliver in specific formats, then please reconsider your options. There are a lot of different NLEs out there. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you all have a great day. Go to apple.com forward slash Final Cut Pro 10 to download it for a good 30-day trial. Thank you very much, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.